So in, in this video, I just want to look at um, two examples of using neural networks and specifically feed forward neural networks. And the first kind of um, natural language processing or NLP task that I want to look at using a feed forward neural network is named entity recognition. So here the problem is you're given a sentence and you want to know um, what is the entity type for some of the words in the sentence. So what, is, what does this thing called the entity type mean? So here, for instance, we've got a sentence last night, Paris Hilton wowed in a sequin gown. Okay. And this means that Paris Hilton here is a person, right? So this would be labeled as person and Hilton here as a person. Here's another sentence. Samuel Quinn was arrested in the Hilton Hotel in Paris in April 1989. And now in this case, Paris isn't a person anymore. It's now a location. So this is a different entity type. And you can see the different types of entities. You've got um, people, characters, um, like that's the person tag. You've got organizations, locations, geopolitical place, and then dates. For instance, here you've got dates. Okay, so the problem now that we want to solve is I'm given like a sentence like this and I want to train a model where I tell the model, listen, tell me what entity type, what type of named entity is Paris, for instance. Or maybe the sentence is this one and I ask it, okay, well, in this case, what is um, the word Paris? What is his named entity type? So let's make that concrete and then I show you how we do this with a feed forward neural network. So let's say we've got um, the sentence anywhere in Paris museums are great and um, we want to know what the entity type of Paris is here in the middle. So one approach if you want to use a for feed forward neural network is to say that we're going to use a window um, of words around the center word. So the center word is Paris in this case, and this is the word that we want to classify. And then we're going to choose. We're going to say, okay, well, let's look at the single word that precedes this and the single word that follows the center word that I want to classify. You could also say, maybe I look at the previous two words and the two words that follow, and the principles will be um, similar. So in this case, I'll just say, okay, let's look at the previous word and the word that follows together with the center word that we want to classify. And what we do is we say, okay, well, represent the previous word with a one art vector. We present the center word with a one art vector and the word that follows with another one art vector. And these three one art vectors are represent here at the bottom. So in our window, so we've got a little window of three words where we're, want, we're interested in the center word. What we do is we feed this window of words into our neural network. So this is the preceding word, center word, word that follows. What we then do is each of these one odd vectors, right? So this one odd vector, in this case with this little diagram here, the first um, word in our one odd vector, that would be the word Paris. So there's a one there and zeros everywhere else, okay? Here there's a one in, um, in that position and zeros everywhere else, and this represents the word in. And here we've got a one there, zeros everywhere else, and that represents the word museums. And what you do is you take each of these one odd vectors and you multiply them them with a matrix. And the result then is, is something um, that you can think of as a word embedding. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it too much for now. Um, but it's basically a continuous um, vector representation of the input here. So we multiply the center word with some matrix, the preceding word with some other matrix, and the word that follows with some other matrix. We then concatenate these, we stack these together, okay, with, which gives us one massive vector. We take this one massive vector, which is Z1, we multiply that with some matrix and we add a bias, B2. So there's actually a little bias uh, vector here as well. Okay, And that gives us uh, activation, and this is a hidden activation somewhere inside our model. We then take this activation and we multiply it with another matrix, W3, and that gives us this vector here. This vector has values between minus infinity and infinity. We take those values, we push that through a softmax. So this edge here has a softmax. We end up, um, in this case, with a vector. It has the same dimensionality as Z. All the values are between 0 and 1, and they sum to 1. And in this case, um, the dimensionality on this figure is just 5. And you can think of each of those points as one of the five possible named entity types. So if the value here is high, 
um, if the second value here is like 1000, then the value here might be very close to one and zeros everywhere else. And that would be maybe an indication that the word is an organization. Okay, I've drawn out this network. I think it's pretty easy for you to do a forward pass through this network with these weights and biases. And um, what happens is we taking in a window of words and what comes out is a bunch of values between zero and one. Okay, and they sum to one. What do you do? You train this thing on a lot of text where you have a whole bunch of windows and each of the center words in the window has been labeled with its named entity type. You use negative log likelihood and you train this thing. And in the end, you end up with a model where you give it three words and it tells you what is the named entity type of the center word. Okay, pretty amazing. Um, you need to know about gradient descent, but if you can do the forward pass, PyTorch and the PyTorch creators have probably helped you with all the gradients for the different blocks, so you don't need to worry about it too much. If you can do the forward pass and get to the uh, value of the last function, you're probably okay, and you can train a model like this. Let's look at a second example from natural language processing, which is a neural language model. In this case, what we're going to do is we're trying to predict the next word in a sentence. So uh, a long, long time ago in a, and then the question is, what is the next word that follows? And again, what we can do is we can say, well, let's look at a little window of preceding words. And in this case, we use a window of four words. So in this case, we say, okay, cool. Given this input, time ago in a, what is the next word that follows? Time ago in a, next word that follows. Again, you can represent these as one odd vectors. You can multiply each of them with an embedding matrix or just the matrix E. Okay. So in the preceding example, I had a different matrix for each of the three positions. Now I'm just saying, okay, cool, just treat all four positions with the same matrix. Um, I concatenate them multiply them, get a vector out, and then um, another vector, and then do a softmax. And now the softmax isn't just over five classes like we had in the named entity re recognition example, but the final output here is over all the different types of words, all the unique word classes that we have in our model. Okay, so the first word might be artfark, and the last word might be zoo, and all the other words are, are in between. And the idea then is that if I have a high output here, a value close to um, one maybe, then that's the word that I predict that would follow. Okay, so in this case, time ago in a, artifact is probably not that likely, zoo is probably not that likely, but galaxy and nan are probably likely words. And this shape was actually one of the early neural language models that, um, that people used. And again, if you can afford, define a, the forward pass through this and write down the loss function, um, PyTorch, Jax, TensorFlow, those guys, they probably have implemented the, um, the gradients for you already and you don't have to stress too much and you can implement it and have a um, wonderful life.